Hi guys, so we are nearly at the end of online learning, we're nearly at our Easter holidays. This is lesson number two of week number 10, okay? We'll have our live lesson on, on, on Friday. So we're gonna do, we're gonna um, fly through these questions and the, the, the solutions from the homework from Monday. Um, and then we're gonna um, give one more thing and that gives us our last, our last activity. Um, so our homework is going to be down here. I'll show you to you. I'll show you to you in a while. Anyway, so we're going to go through this, um, like flowing through pipes, water flowing through pipes, and filling in the tanks, um, and capacity and stuff like that. I'll give you a couple of questions for homework, and that's the end of applied measure. Three chapters worth of applied measure, and then what we do is, um, when we get back to the classroom, we will go over the revision exercise and the exam questions, and we'll talk about doing a test in a few weeks after we come back but you don't have to worry about that for the moment we're more worried about settling into easter holidays now and taking a break from all these all these screens and so on and so forth um like i said this the homework difficult it's extremely difficult this is the kind of higher end of higher level this is as hard as it gets it's supposed to be difficult um it's it, it'd be much easier if i could draw these out and go and talk you through them and get down to see your copy and things like that which i can't but we will be going through these um, again. Um, we haven't planned too much more, myself and Miss Connolly, haven't planned too much more um, towards the end of the year. So we'll have time to go back over all this stuff again, which will be important because it's um, everyone is finding it very difficult, which is um, expected. Anyway, we'll keep going and we'll, and we'll, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best and we'll, we'll finish off. Um, this will be our last homework exercise today. You want to homework on Friday. It could be put the bags and iPads away for two weeks. Okay, so the ones I gave you to do were question, we, st we start off with question number number four, if we can. I'll just make it slightly smaller so I can write in, um, um, right, right on the right-hand side. I want to bring it down slightly. So there is question four. So question four is down here in the bottom left, and I'll just start up here on the, to on the top right. So four, is there a part A? There is. Okay, so question four A, they ask you to, and in and answers in terms of pi, find the um, curved surface area and the total surface area of a sphere and a hemisphere. Well, a sphere only has a curved surface area because it's a sphere and the whole thing is curved. So the formula you use to find the curved surface area is four pi r squared. So four pi r squared. That's the formula you're gonna use to find the curved surface area. Again, that formula is in the log tables, which we're gonna be using a lot more of from now on. So in this case, it's gonna be four um, times pi. It says in terms of pi, so we won't sub in for pi. And the radius they've given us is four, isn't it? It is four meters, so four squared. So we, if we have a four squared, multiply by four. So four squared is um, 16 by four gives us 64 pi meters squared. And that's our answer to 4a. So we don't have to find the total surface area because the total surface area of a sphere is the same as the curved surface area because the whole thing is curved. Hemisphere is slightly different. A hemisphere is going to be, um, so for part b, we're asked to find the curved surface area and total surface area of a hemisphere because there is a flat bit on a half a sphere. So the radius is 25 and they're giving us pi this time. So we're not gonna have pi in our answer this time. So our formula to find um, the curved surface area of a hemisphere is, is two pi r squared. So that's gonna work out as two times, they said 3.14 pi, and the radius they give us this time is 25. So two pi r squared. We multiply that out in a calculator, and that is going to give us 3,925, and I think it's in centimeters, they say centimeters this time, is centimeters squared. Curved surface area is centimeters squared. So that's the, that's the area of the curve bit. We also have to work out, so we've worked out the area of that bit. We now have to work out the area of the top bit. So the way we do that, we do total surface area. So our total surface area is what we've worked out. So it's going to be 2 pi r squared, which is 3,925, plus pi r squared. That's the area of the, of, the, of the flat bit. Again, it's in the log tables. So that's going to work out as 3,925 plus 
3.14 by 25 squared. Okay, so we work that out and this works out as 1,962 and a half. Add back on your 3,925 and that's going to give us 95, 5,800 and 87.5 centimeters squared. So what I did there was I got my um, curved surface area, which was 2 pi r squared. That worked out as 2 pi r squared. That's out of the log tables, the formula. It's up above as well in the notes. And you get 3,925 for the curved surface area. But to find total surface area, I need the curved surface area, which I worked out, the curvy bit. And I need the flat bit on top. And to get the flat the area, the flat bit on top, which is a circle, if you're looking down it, is pi r squared. So I get curved surface area plus pi r squared. I work that out, add the two of them together, and I get 5887.5 centimeters squared. Okay, that's question four. Um, question number seven. I'll put, so it's up in the top left there, and I'll write it down below. Question number seven. Um, asks, you have a metal cylinder. So a big lump of metal in the shape of a cylinder. The cylinder has radius of six millimeters. So they're saying that the cylinder here, the radius is six millimeters. That's in the radius. And it has a height of 10 millimeters. So from there to there is going to be 10. I'm just putting them in there so it looks a bit, um, it has a bit more information on it. So um, a, a radius of six and a height of 10. Find the volume of the cylinder. Giving your answer in millimeters cubed in terms of pi it means you're going to have pi in your answer okay so the, the formula for the volume of a cylinder is pi or squared h so i'm going to sub into that so um leave the pi in terms of pi our radius is six squared by the height which is 10. so our volume is going to be 360 Our radius is going to be 360 pi millimeters cubed because we're dealing in volume. That's part A. Part B then says that part B then says a number of these cylinders are melted down. So they melt the cylinder down. And they're going to make spheres from it. So they're going to turn this melted down cylinder into a load of spheres. Oh, don't cross it out. Right, like this. Into a load of spheres. And those spheres are going to have radius 25 millimeters. How many spheres are you going to get out of that? Okay, well, our, first off, let's, let's look at the volume of a sphere first. So our volume of our sphere are going to be 4 over 3 pi or q. Again, out of the notes, out of the log tables. 4 over 3 pi or cubed. Down a bit, so a bit more space. Um, so let, let, let's sub into that. We have 4 over 3 by, they don't tell us to sub in for pi again, do they? No. So 4 over 3 pi, they say it's going to be 25 millimeters, so 25 cubed. Like so. Okay, so let's work that out. So 25 cubed into your calculator. Is going to work out so i'm going to multiply 25 cubed by 4 over 3 and what that's going to give me is 2083.33 so it's giving me a, it's giving me a bit of a decimal pi millimeters cubed so that's what they're saying is going to be the least number of cylinders that must be metal down but why am i after working out well there is the volume of one of those spheres there is the volume of um, of one of those spheres. Okay, so what they're saying, well, okay, well, if that's the volume of one of our spheres, and that is where we work it out, this is the volume of our cylinder. I'm going to say, well, how many cylinders would it take? So we 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 put one over the other. So we're going to have, oops, slightly. Um, we're going to have 
2083.33 pi all over 360 pi. So here's the volume of the cylinder. Here's the volume of the spheres. We divide that in. Remember, if you divide pi into pi, cancels out. So what we're going to get is 360. It gives you 5.786. 5.786. So somewhere around six cylinders. Here, C Y. How do you spell cylinder? C Y L I N D E R S. Somewhere around six. Cylinders. So just to recap what I've done there, right? If I have, I've worked out, here is the formula to find the volume of um, uh, a sphere. So I've worked out, I, I've, I've subbed in my radius and I found, right, here is the volume of one of the spheres. Or here, here, yeah, so here's the volume of one of the spheres. Here's the volume of the, of the big cylinder you have in the question. So we say, well, how many cylinders can you make of a sphere of radius what did i say in the question of radius 25 millimeters so we say right well here is our cylinder here is a spheres when you divide it in you can get around 5.786 or somewhere around six cylinders or just under six cylinders okay right like i said very difficult um kind of questions but it just Use the formulas. What are they asking? When you see that question there, you say, right, find the volume of a cylinder. And that's okay. They say, right, we've already found the volume of the cylinder. But then they start speaking about spheres. So you're saying, okay, well, let's find the volume of the sphere. And then you can relate it to your first answer. So that's the, 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 the jump to higher level maths. They're not just going to say, here's the formula, find the volume. Here's the formula, find the surface area. They're going to want you to dig in and figure out how the questions so these are all engineering and architecture questions okay question number 10 I'll try and fit that in underneath here somewhere if we can so question number 10 is this one down here about a lighthouse so a lighthouse consists of a hemisphere on a um, on a cylinder a hemisphere on top of a cylinder so there's a general shape of a lighthouse there the diameter is 14 meters they're giving you that be careful diameter is 14 you know the radius is half that the overall height is 37 they're giving you that as well by taking pi is 22 over 7 and um, the external surface area of the lighthouse so find the external surface area of the lighthouse you can ignore the base so you're looking for the two sides and the bit on top okay so we start with the hemisphere i suppose so if we start with the top bit so So this is question 10. So the hemisphere, first off. Remember, we're looking for surface area here. So hemisphere, we're looking for surface area. So our formula we're going to use is 2 pi r squared. 2 pi r squared. And let's sub in. Let's see, can we sub into that? We're going to have 2 times... They ask us to put in 22 over 7, don't they? So 2 times 22 over 7. By the radius they give us, they give us 14. We know it's half that. 7 squared. So we're subbing in to find the surface area of the hemisphere. So when you work that out then um, into your calculator, so 7 7 is 49 by 2. Multiply by 22 over 7, it gives you 308 meters squared. Okay, so we found, after finding the, the top bit, that's our first answer, we found the surface area of the bit on top of the lighthouse. The second thing we're going to do, I'll do it out here in the right, what is it, a, a, sm a small bit of space, is we're going to find the surface area of the other bit. We're going to try and find the surface, the, the surface area of, not the hemisphere, the cylinder. So we're going to use the other, we're going to, we're going to use the other formula is 2 pi or h. So I'm going to do it side by side, 2 pi or h, the curved surface area of a cylinder, again in the log tables, okay? Which is two times, they told us 22 over seven, 
by the radius, the same as the, same as the hemisphere. And two pi radius is seven. And the height they gave us as well in the question was 37, wasn't it? No, not 37, be careful. What's the height of the cylinder? Big mistake, because we're only taking into account the cylinder. We have to take away the radius of the hemisphere as well. So it's going to be 37 minus 7, which is going to be 30. We're not sure on that, ask me. Um, when you multiply those out, 37 by 10 by 30, it gives you 1,320 meters squared. Be careful with that one there, the 30. It says 37 here, but that includes the radius up there. See that radius there? We've already done that. So be careful. So it's 37. That's a, different, that's a real higher level question, this one. So, fine. To, to, to finish it off, we now have our surface area of our cylinder bit. We now have our surface area of our hemisphere bit. So what we can do is we can add those two together. We can say 308 plus 1,320. So our total surface area of the whole lot is 1628 1628 and what's the um units meters squared 1628 and that's the total surface area of your lighthouse okay um moving on then up to question number 12 okay question number 12 is um, a lot of tennis balls in a tennis ball box essentially um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of question seven there for the moment, but sure, you can watch it back in the video if needs be. So I'm just going to get rid of question seven for a second so I can write and answer to question 12, okay? So we'll do it right beside question 12. Okay, so question 12 says, a tennis ball has the radius three uh, has the radius three centimeters. Right, so what they're saying there is that from the center of a tennis ball to the side is three centimeters. I'm just putting it in on the on the diagram first. I often do that. We're in terms of pi. Pi is going to be in our answer. Um, so three such tennis balls fit exactly into a cylindrical tube. The radius and so we're looking to find the radius and height of the of the tube first off. So we do, we do that first. So that we're looking for the radius and height of the tube. So basically we're looking for we're dealing with we're dealing with a cylinder. That's a that, that's a cylindrical tube. So our um the radius and height of the tube. sorry no part A find the volume of a find the volume of a tennis ball first. So find the volume of a tennis ball. So to find the, the to find the volume of a tennis ball, we use the formula: four thirds pi or cubed. Okay. So we're leaving pi. So it's going to be that's going to be equal to four over three by pi by three cubed, which is going to be equal to thirty six pi centimeters cubed. So there's our first answer. That's the um, volume of um, a volume of a tennis ball. Thirty six pi centimeters cubed. If you wanted to figure out the volume of all the tennis balls, multiply that by three. Don't know what they ask next. The radius and height of the tube. Okay, so for twelve b, we're on to um, we're on to cylinders. So we know um, for twelve b, the radius and height of the tube. So the radius anyway. If the radius and height of the tube, is that a trick question? The radius and height of the tube. Okay, well the radius of the tube is just gonna be the radius of the ball. So we can see there that they fit exactly. So if I'm saying, well, the radius from here to here is gonna be three, from here to here is gonna be three. So the radius of the tennis ball is equal to the radius of the tube. If I mean, is 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 it a is it a trick question? I'll check the solution for that just to make sure because we can tell from our uh, from a radius of our tennis ball they fit exactly in there. So for B part one, the radius is equal to three centimeters. 
radius of the tube is the same as the radius of the ball. Um, I'll just go. I have the solutions out here, the right somewhere. Um, yeah, radius is three centimeters. Oh, grand. Okay, right. So we are right. Um, the second one, the capacity or the volume of the tube. Now, this we don't have. So we're looking for the volume of the tube. So this is B part two. So the volume of the tube, um, which is going to be um, pi or squared h. So there's a volume of, um, of a cylinder. Um, so we sub in, so it's going to be pi radius three squared by the height, which is going to be 18. Thinking, how do we get 18? How do we get, how do we get the height there? Well, you're thinking, well, if I have a radius there, that's going to be three. This is going to be three. This radius is going to be three. This radius is going to be three. This radius is going to be three. And this radius is going to be three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. So the height of the cylinder is going to be 18. So that's where I'm getting to, just in case I didn't work that out. How did I get the H? So we're looking for the volume of a cylinder, pi or squared H. And when we work out then, then we, we, we try that into a calculator, leaving pi alone, it's 162 pi centimeters cubed. Okay, so see they leave out that, they leave out that um, the bits about the radius and bit, uh, that you have to work out in the height of the cylinder. Um, so you've got to think on your feet to get through these questions. Part three, the fraction of, the fraction of the volume of the tube that is taken up by the three tennis balls. Okay, well we know that, we know that the whole tube is 162 pi. We also know that the volume of one tennis ball is going to be 36 pi. So it's going to be 36 pi by three for the three tennis balls over 162. So 36 by three is 108 pi over 162 pi. And 108 over 162, unless I'm mistaken, is two thirds. So two thirds of the cylinder is going to be taken up by tennis ball. The rest is going to be empty space. You see a space in here and a space in here and a space around the top and so on and so forth. Even though they fit exactly in, there's still spaces because of the shape. Last one, guys. Question number question number 14. Question number 14 is an extraordinarily tricky question. Um, but we'll have a quick look and see um, what, kind of, um, what, what kind of outcome. I'm going to try and squeeze it into this little space here if I can, right? Just for the sake of it being beside um, where we're going. Because I don't think the solution, looking at this, I don't think the solution will be that long. So, if we take it nice and handy with this, an ornament is carved from a rectangular block of wood. So there was a rectangular block of wood there, they carved bits off it, and you're left with this um, uh, sphere and a cube and a sphere and a cube. Well, I assume they're cubes. Um, um, so the height of the whole thing is 24. They put it on the diagrams. The height of the whole yoke is 24, from the top of the top sphere to the bottom of the bottom cube. Two identical spheres, that's good to know. They're identical spheres and two identical cubes. So they're not cuboids, which is, which is good as well. The diameter of each sphere is equal to the length of the side of each cube. Okay, right? The ornament has the same width as the original block. Okay, so the width of the ornament has not changed. And we know now that the length of one of the sides here is the same as the diameter of one of the spheres, which is handy to know. So they're all the same diameter if you want. Um, find the length of a side of one of the cubes. So a length of the side of one of the cubes. Okay, well that's easy, because we know the diameter of the sphere is the same as the length 
of one of the sides of the cubes. So if we know the length of the whole thing is 24, so the whole length of the whole thing is 24, we can just divide that by four, and that will give us um, the length of the sides of one of the cubes. So it's just going to be six centimeters. Six centimeters, isn't it? Yeah, six centimeters. After that then, so that's part A done, it was easy. Um, part B, find the volume of the ornament. Okay, not the volume of the uncut thing, but the volume of the actual ornament. Now we have spheres and cubes here. Okay. So if we um, look, uh, we know that the, 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 to find the volume of a sphere, it's four thirds pi or cubed. So we do them both at the same time. As opposed to having four thirds pi r cubed, do you know the way we go in a, for a hemisphere? We can half that to two thirds pi r cubed. Because there's two spheres, we can just double that to eight thirds. So two thirds for a hemisphere, four thirds for a sphere, and two spheres is gonna be eight thirds. And this only works now if they're both the same, ra same radius. Eight thirds pi, radius is three, isn't it? three cubed okay and then the other things we have to take into account so that'll give us the volume of the two spheres the other thing we have to take into account is these cubes the volume of a cube remember it's length by width by height and we know that all the sides of those cubes we work now up here are going to be six so it's going to be e for each each cube is going to be six by six by six so, so this cube, to find the volume of this one here, six by six by six, to find the volume of this one here is six by six by six. So we're gonna have, so obviously this is gonna give us the volume of the sphere plus twice six by six by six, or you could do twice six cubed. And I'm gonna work that, I'm, we're, we're, gonna work, we're gonna work all them out. So if you get eight thirds pi r cubed into your calculator, add, Two by six by six by six. Six by six by six. It gives you a big number. It gives you six hundred and fifty-eight point one eight centimeters cubed in my calculator. So you can do that separately. You can do eight thirds pi r cubed. Work it out. Get your answer, and then you can do six cubed by two. Get your answer. Add them together. It's up to yourself. But that's the answer to part B. That is the volume of the ornament there. Okay, last bit of this question. That's a tricky question, very tricky question. Last one, in making the ornament, what percentage of the original block of wood is carved away? What percentage of the original block of wood is going to be carved away? Okay, well, the original, um, the, the volume of the original block is going to be, remember, length, by width, by height, is the volume of a cuboid. So if we look at our diagram there for a second, we know that this here, across here, is six, back here is six, and we know the length is 24. So we can find the volume of that, um, of that piece by doing um, six, so this is part C, is gonna be six by six by, 24 length by width by height so 6 by 6 by 24 6 by 6 by 24 which is equal to 864 centimeters cubed that's our volume of our original piece of wood okay so and the bit that was carved away then well we know that that volume of the actual ornament is 658.18 because we worked that out so we get Here's what the, orig the original volume was. Take away what was left in the actual ornament, so 658.18, and that will give you 205.83. That's what's left um, taken away after you've carved. And the way to finish that then is just you put 
over, and again, I can't really squeeze in, can I? Hold on. So if we put 205.83, so 205.83, all over 658.18, multiply that by 100 over 1, that will give you your final percentage answer. They ask for percentage of the original block of wood. I'd say it works out around about 25%, something like that, um, 25.8. Yeah, ju ju just so there's things, 23.84%, something like that. I'll just check, I don't know what answer they got over here. 23.82, I get 23.84. So um, the solutions are there for you to have a look at as well. But um, I mean, this is not your bread and butter. This is not what gets you a decent grade. This is what gets you a top grade battling through questions like this. It is extremely difficult um, and it's better when you can kind of, you know, get annoyed about it in class and fire answers at me and, you know, um, make me do extra examples and so on. But it's just not uh, possible at the moment. But we will have time. I have put time aside to go back over this stuff again and go back over things like um, arithmetic and um, things that, you, that would have caused you would have caused you bother over the last 10 weeks and the fact that you're still engaged at all is remarkable but don't worry we're not worried we'll um we'll carry on regardless we'll have a class on um on friday and we'll be doing a few more of these um um, um if needs be right so um just a couple of couple of quick things and th these again these are extremely tricky probably the hardest thing on the junior set course so uh, i'm not going to dwell i'm just going to say right if you give them a shot see how you get on um, and um, we'll go into it in much more detail when we get back. We'll be doing a revision of the whole topic. A solid metal sphere is made of lead. It is recast to form a cylinder of radius 8.1 and height 6. Okay, so basically you had a sphere, melt it down, chuck it into a cylinder. Find the radius of the sphere, give your answer correctly to There's no place. Right, so you've done these kind of things before. Here's your formula here for the, for the volume of a cylinder. So pi r squared h, pi, oops, marking it out, opposed to it, pi r squared h. So they sub in and they get, right, here's the volume of the cylinder. They've subbed in 8.1, which they give us, and 6 is the radius to give us this here. So that's your volume of your cylinder. Okay. Then we put down the, 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 the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So they say, right, Here's the volume of the sphere, and it came from the cylinder. So you let them equal each other. You want to find the radius. So basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna put um, everything that's not the radius underneath. So this is like having two x cubed equals five. You put the two on the other side, like they've done here, and you get um, 295.295, and you don't want or cubed, you want or. So if you go, if you have x squared is equal to, 64, you get the square root of 64 to get x. Same here. If you have r cubed, you get the cubed root and gives you 6.66. Like I said, quite difficult. One more. Um, the things like if you have a um, if you have a pipe like this and water is coming into your house all the time, so water's flowing through the pipe all the time, and you're wondering um, about water pressure and pressure dropping and how much water is coming in at a particular time. So a flow speed of 12 centimeters per second in a cylindrical pipe means that for every second um, of flow, the water travels a distance of 12 centimeters. So here's, your, here's a piece of the pipe here. And every second, the water will get from here to the end. So it will manage to travel through the full 20, 12 centimeters of pipe. Right, one example, and um, I, I, I'll leave you to it. Generally in science, we don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. We do things like this. We do things like we put things in overflow cans and get volumes like that. But if we have a look at this um, this pipe here, so here's a pipe here, and it's pouring water into a tank, like happens in the attic of your house. So it's it's, um, it's, it's flown through the cylindrical tank at a speed of 35 centimeters per second. So it's traveling 35 centimeters through a pipe every second. The radius of that pipe is five centimeters. Remember, it's a cylinder, cyl cylindrical pipe. It's been poured into a cubic tank of side 100. See the 100 there. Find the rise in the depth of the water in the tank in five minutes. So 
So how much water will be in that tank in five minutes? Okay, so if we take the cylinder first off and we find that we find the volume of that cylinder, normal formula you've been using all the time. And you can get bogged down with these questions, but just you have a cylinder and you have a cube. Do what you can do with it. Write down the formula for a, for, for, to find the volume of a cylinder and sub in pi r squared h 35. And they work out, so the volume of that cylinder is 2,750 centimeters cubed. And they're saying that, that that will fill in five, so they're looking to see in five minutes, what will the depth of the water be? And bear in mind, that's coming from this cylinder. So we say, well, okay, well, five minutes, there's 300 seconds in five minutes. So the volume of water which flows into the tank in five minutes is gonna be, well, Here's going to be um, in a second, and here's going to be in the 300 seconds, or the five minutes. So that's how much water is going to flow into the tank. Doesn't matter about the tank, shape of the tank at this point. We're just wondering how, um, how far it's going to go up. So we're worried about the volume of the cylinder in this case. The second one now, um, we have to find if we let the volume of the if, if we let x equals the depth in the tank so we don't know the depth of the water in the tank okay so what we do we let x is the increase in the depth of the water so how much water has gone in okay so we have what's the area it is going to be length by width times the x is equal to what we worked out 825000 so x squared, um, uh, um, 10,000 by x is 825,000. X is 82 and a half centimeters. So the rise in the depth is going to be 82.5 centimeters. Okay. So we're looking how much has the water risen in the tank in five minutes. Okay. So... What we can say is the water, the amount of water flowing into the tank, we worked out here. This is the amount of water that's actually flowing into the tank. Okay, and that's fine. That's how much water is actually going into the tank. But we're saying, well, let, let's, let, let's look at this tank. Um, and, the, and, and the actual size of the tank is 100 by 100. By the height, we don't know. So length by width by height is 825,000. So we multiply 100 by 100, gives us 10,000. By the height, we don't know, gives us this amount. Same as having two x equals 825,000. We divide 10,000 into 825,000 and it gives us 82.5. That's the height. That's the amount of water that's been added in. Okay, so I know tricky, takes time to work through. But um, you know, bear with it. It it, it just kind of gets easier as, as as you do as you do more of them. Last example for today. Okay, so like I said, this is just an example of how we would do water displacement. It would give us the volume immediately, but using science. But um, the maths is important and um, to to know as well. Okay, one more last one. I'll leave. I know it's a long one. A cylindrical cylindrical tank of radius twelve centimeters. So bear in mind a couple of things there. One, we're dealing with a cylinder. Two, 12 centimeter radius is filled with water. Here's our tank down the bottom on the right there, see it? A sphere of radius six is then fully immersed in the water. You know, if you put a rock in water, like you did in science with the overflow cans, the water will rise up. By how much will the height of the water rise? Okay. So we only know information about the cylinder. So well, we, we, we know the radius of the cylinder and we know the radius of the ball. So when the sphere is dropped in, it's gonna rise by h. We don't know, so we're just gonna put it down as h. The volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the amount of water that is displaced. So the amount of water that it goes up by. So what we can say, well, we know the, what do we know? We know the volume of a sphere. We can work that out. The volume of a sphere, is four thirds pi r cubed. Sub in what the information they give us. Four thirds pi, they give us six as a radius, cubed. So we know the volume of that sphere is 288 pi. No point subbing in for pi if you don't need to. You'll be able to cancel out. Okay, so the volume of a cylinder 
is going to be pi r squared h. And we let that equal to the volume of the sphere because of this, the volume of the sphere is equal to the volume of the displaced water in the cylinder. Basically, the amount of the water goes up by is the same as the volume of the sphere. So we say, right, if um, the volume of the sphere was 288 pi, and that's going to be, and we're going to work out how much of the cylinder went up by. So we work, we work it out, we sub in what we can. So what we're going to have there is 12 squared is your radius, because it's, it's in the question. So pi, um, or squared h, is equal to 288. You know, we had pi here and pi here, so we cancel them out. So we get 144 h, so 12, 12 squared and 144 is equal to 288. Divide 144 into 288 and it get, we, we get 2. So the water went up or was displaced by 2 centimetres. So we can say that h is 2 centimetres. So this part here is going to be 2 centimetres. Okay, tricky one. Very, very, very tricky one. Right, I want you to have a go at a couple of these. I don't want you to labour over them too much. You've had an awfully long term, um, and we'll be going over them again. We won't get we 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 will correct them on Friday in the live lesson, but we'll be going over them again. Um, first, um, the first two question two and question four are just um, you're finding the radius, so you you're just using formulas given um given volumes and heights, so you're just messing around with formulas. Um, then it kind of gets a bit tricky for the last three. And um, for question number nine is um, a rectangular sheet of metal um, and you have um, like a, a cylinder cut into the metal. So you're looking to calculate the value of H. So you're looking for this one here. You're looking for the height of the cylinder. So it's a tricky one. Using the formula for the volume of a cuboid, using the formula for the volume of a cylinder, taking one away from the other. It's a good question. Worth a shot. Give it a few minutes. See can you work it out. Um, question 12 is another one similar to the example above. Um, it's a cylindrical tank pouring into another cylindrical tank. So you're only going to be using the volume of um, a cylinder. See, can you work it out? And the last one is coming from a cuboid off a gutter, I think, um, into um, a, a, a water storage tank, which is a one meter diameter. Be careful. Um, so a couple of questions for you to try. Use the examples above. Give them a shot, give them half hour. Give them half an hour. Oh, sorry, I haven't been scrolling down. So you have um, <clears throat> your questions here. And there's question two, question four, nice and handy ones. Nice to give you a bit of confidence um, moving into the rest of them. Question nine is a cylinder cut into a, a cuboid. Um, question um, 12, you're just dealing with the, form, with, the, with the volume of a cylinder. And question 14, you're dealing with the volume of a cuboid and the volume of um, a cylinder. Like I say, give them 20 minutes, half an hour. We correct them on a Friday. There'll be no homework on Friday. And um, <clears throat> I have a few corrections to catch up with on your homeworks, on some of your homeworks I haven't got to in a while, um, but I will do those over the Easter holidays as well to get a, a good gauge of how people are doing. Okay, guys, I'll chat to you on Friday. Mind yourselves.